Hi everyone, Shade here with my updated Shadow Necromancer build. This build is currently crushing World Tier 4, and I've been able to do lower 30s for Nightmare Dungeons. I just don't have many clips of it yet. I'm going through the changes uh, from my original build, as well as some of the gear setup from my current build to give you an update. I'll try to do a more extensive gear video later and in a more extensive dot talk later as well. I just haven't had much luck getting good pieces to drop to test. Uh, before I get into the video, I just want to remind you that I stream on Twitch. The link is in the description below. Feel free to follow me there if you want to. Also, you can do the normal YouTube jazz and help buff the algorithm. Now, let's get into the build. As you can see, I've kept things pretty much the same from the original build. The biggest change being my core skills. I still have Reap in the basic uh, skills so that I can get that corpse generation, but I've taken out Sever and added Blight. Blight adds a pool that if the enemy stand in it, it uh, take, ticks for shadow damage, but it also slows them for 25% and allows me to do more damage to them with the upgrades. The slow helps proc control, which helps get our damage rolling early. Uh, it's also got a great lucky hit percentage that allows us to generate corpses through hued flesh because that is a big, big thing that we need to continuously generate corpses to do our damage. Blood Mist hasn't changed. It's another corpse generator, and it's also our only un our only unstoppable. So it's really our CC breaker, and it's very important to the build, especially as you start pushing higher and higher into Nightmare tiers. Things we... Necromancers are pretty much very susceptible to CC, and this is our only chance to break out of CC. So I think it's a must have in almost every Necromancer build, especially if you're pushing higher tiers, unless you can clear the the rooms before you walk in there. Uh, our bread and butter skill is, as always, is Corpse Explosion, and we have the Miasma effect so that it's a pool as opposed to straight up uh, an explosion effect. Uh, these are Grim Harvest and Fueled by Death are the ones that they up our damage as we're generating corpses or as we're consuming corpses and we're generating essence doing that as well. Uh, Death's Embrace, close enemies take more damage and deal less damage to me. Uh, then we have Corpse Tendrils. Corpse Tendrils is a great skill in that it procs a stun and it also for me it's generating blood orbs through the Blighted. Uh, you can also look into Plagued for Vulnerable. I'm kind of playing with that to see uh, if Vulnerable damage actually works a lot. I've been, had a few misconceptions on Crit that I'm trying to see if Crit is actually pretty useful. I think it could be um, because we have a lot more instances for Crit and Vulnerable damage is another one of those damage types that I think could be beneficial. Uh, I just have to play with it a little bit more. We're taking all of the shadow passives. We have Reaper's Pursuit, which gives us movement speed when we damage with darkness. We've got Gloom, which we do extra damage with enemies with darkness skills. Um, and that stacks up to 18%. We've got Crippling Darkness, which at, gives our darkness skills a lucky hit chance to stun, which is why we want lucky hit, because getting that stun will proc the 20% damage to control. And then we have Terror which does 9% damage to enemies that are slowed, which Blight slows, and then 9% bonus damage to Stunned, which we're stunning with Crippling Darkness. So it kind of compounds on itself, and we eventually we'll get to do 18% extra damage to enemies. We have Standalone because we are minionless, and we take Memento Mori because we have those, it gives a buff to the sacrifice bonuses. And then our ultimate is Bone Storm because of the aspect that turns it into a darkness skill. This is a great skill because it gives us damage reduction and critical strike chance. And then the key passive is Shadow Blight. I didn't talk about this a lot in the original video, but this procs quite a bit because we're always ticking damage. So what Shadow Blight does is uh, anytime we affect an enemy with shadow damage. Uh, we give them shadow blight, which gives us a 10% damage boost against them. And then every 10th time we give them shadow blight, they get hit for a hit of damage. And that's for every instance of shadow damage. So if they're standing in a pool, they're taking tons of instances of shadow damage. Every 10th time they take shadow damage from us, this procs. And this can be a crit chance. 
So that's the breakdown of the skills. Let's move into the Paragon board. Here is my Paragon board. Um, I am just into level 80. Uh, and I've done a little bit of a shakeup compared to what I had earlier. I still think the earlier ones works until you get to a certain point. So I would have the glyphs and things in the order that I had them in the original video. And then this has been a shakeup since about uh, like level 75 or something like that when I was able to uh, kind of start adding things. So let me walk through everything. Now I've shifted. I used to have territorial here. I now have sacrificial because I think the magic nodes here benefit more because it's willpower and damage and straight up damage. So I think that those benefit more from the bonuses from sacrificial, which grants us uh extra bonus to all magic nodes so i'll be getting all the magic nodes eventually i just don't have them now and this was an easy one to get uh 40 intelligence in as well and with that i have unlocked 10 percent increased damage to myself i've taken the the first board i've taken is wither wither is pretty good i've read that it's not a big buff and i i'm gonna have to see if that's something worth looking into like people were saying it's like a two percent increase in damage, but I, I think it's more than that. It just depends on how often you proc shadow and we proc shadow all the time. So I'm going to look into seeing how that is, but the board itself is great because it's got a lot of rare nodes like gnawing darkness and lingering shadows, which gives you a boost to shadow damage over time. And then it also has malediction, which is a boost to shadow damage. And then I also have control in socketed in here and control is one of the best glyphs for us because it adds extra damage to crowd controlled enemies which if you hit them with any with blight they're crowd controlled you the if we get the stun procs they're crowd controlled so we do a lot of crowd control in this build so it's just a lot of extra damage and then on top of that if you get the extra intelligence uh, we will deal 10% extra damage to slowed or chilled and double that bonus if they're stunned or frozen. And we're slowing and stunning them all the time. So this buff is always up. It's very important. So I, I highly recommend getting this glyph socketed. And then I came over here and I grabbed Flesh Eater. Flesh Eater is a 40% damage bonus every time we consume five corpses. I did testing the uh, what happens is you consume the five corpses and then the buff happens for six seconds and any corpse you consume after that does not like reset the timer on it so it's basically eat five corpses have that damage window then you have to eat five more to have the damage you can't continuously have 40 percent extra damage i wish it, you could but you can't but it's it's a significant bonus you definitely see it you definitely feel it and i think it's a pretty good pick uh, it also helps that we have critical strike damage and damage to injured enemies. Just kind of helps us kill bosses. And then this is an elite node here. And in this node, this is where I put territorial uh, because there are enough to get five dexterity nodes within uh, range. So it gives us 51% chance to damage close enemies and then also the damage reduction, which is really great. And I just unlocked this tree, which is scent of death. Um, this is going to be great to get to because uh, if we have two corpses near us, we have 15% damage reduction. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to slot uh, darkness in here. Darkness will increase our shadow damage, which every skill we use is shadow damage. And then it also will reduce damage by enemies affected by shadow damage, which stacks up to 10%. And then my other board, I'm going to go blood begets blood and I'm going to add scourge to which is just an upping our shadow damage over time. So I would prioritize darkness over scourge just because we have more darkness skills than we do shadow damage over time skills. So that is my recommendation. Now I'm going to go into my equipment and these are just the aspects I've been using at tier four. Uh, Yours can change. I kind of want to change some stuff out too. I'll talk about weapon sets a little bit as well. But here's what I'm wearing. I have uh, Shielding Storm in my helm, which gives us a barrier every time uh, Bone Storm damages an enemy, which is great. So it's up all the time for the entire thing, which is why I blow it during Elite Packs. I basically can just stand there and spam uh, 
corpse explosion and everything and not really worry the higher keys that you start worrying depending on what the affixes are but for the most part you can not have to worry i've also socketed all my armor with topazes for the extra damage reduction while control impaired this is not a really good roll of a helm uh i got this when i thought resistances did something and they don't really they may later on so i'm going to probably hang on to it but i'd rather have damage reduction as opposed to resistances on this uh, the maximum life is great but i'd rather have like some kind of damage reduction so i'm trying to see if i can find something that will fit into that better um this is a newer chest that i've gotten i'm still looking to kind of tweak it a little bit but this has damage reduction and damage reduction from close which almost every enemy we fight is close uh, this has disobedience on it which is arguably one of the best defensive aspects you can get this gives you a stacking armor for four seconds that will stack up to 50 percent extra armor and our dots are ticking on groups all the time this is always up close to 100 percent on our hands is Howl from Below. This is the unique. I love it. Uh, it's not 100% needed, but it's really great. You don't have to worry about repositioning enemies. It, it's a great skill. Plus, it boosts corpse explosion, uh, gives you faster uh, corpse skill attack speed, and gives you lucky hit, which, like I said earlier, is great for the huge flesh passive because we want to generate corpses. So. Getting more lucky hit is always, always a good thing. In my legs, I have Aspect of the Protector. This gives you a barrier when damaging an elite. Just like the chest and the helmet, you want to get damage reduction on there. This one is okay because I've got total armor and maximum life, but I'd like to get some damage reduction on some legs if I can. I'm wearing the unique Penitent Greaves. They're okay. Um, the movement speed is great, especially for a slow class like this, but I'd rather have some more defensive skills on there with some movement speed. The uh, unique effect actually works really well with the control glyph where it chills enemies and gives you a chance to freeze them. Plus you do more damage against them. For amulets, uh, I, I put blighted on here. It, you deal 75% increased damage for six seconds after shadow blight it damages the enemies 10 times. This one's not too bad. I was hoping to get like shadow damage on here and some better corpse skills, but you know, beggars can't be choosers sometimes and just haven't gotten the drops. First ring is Band of Decay. Uh, this is a great one because every time Shadow Blight procs damage, it increases the damage of the next one, stacking up to five times. You can get up to 200% damage on your Shadow Blight. And then on this one, I have the Loop of Ultimate Shadow. This turns Bone Storm into a darkness skill, and it gets affected by all the darkness stuff that we have. Right now, I'm rocking Wand and Offhand Focus. Uh, Wand is here because the Lucky Hit Chance is so high. Generate corpses all the time. This is far from a ideal rolled one, but it does some decent damage. I've added the Corpse Tendrils aspect to it, so when I use Corpse Tendrils, I get 10% Increased critical strike chance and 30% bonus critical strike damage to enemies that have been hit by it. And then on the focus, I have inner calm, which if I'm standing there, I do increase damage. I was thinking of maybe conceded, but I haven't gotten one to drop to see how that works with all the barriers that we have up because it is extra damage. But we don't have barriers up 100% of the time. We're also not standing still 100% of the time either. An honorable mention that I will... Uh, add is I've been using the bloodless scream and mainly because this was such a great role on this, but this is a two handed scythe. Um, it adds a ton of darkness damage, damage to chilled, which we're actually chilling with our penitent greaves and with the unique on this one, it adds damage to frozen enemies because we can freeze them. But the bonus is your darkness skills chill enemies for 40%. So now we add the chill, which adds a slow, and it all kind of compounds, and so you're constantly procking control. I have noticed with dots that the damage is higher when I'm wielding a two-hander as opposed to the one hand and the offhand, but my corpse generation is a lot slower. So, you know, you can play what you want, and those are the two choices. I think wand and focus or two-hander are the two choices you want to make. I had, I know I had a shield in the last one, but I just didn't see a benefit unless you want an extra defensive aspect. You can go shield, but it, 
the focus allows you to get an extra offensive aspect on top of that. So that's the build. Like I said, I've been doing uh, lower 30s for Nightmare Dungeons. It's been going pretty well. I've just been kind of stonewalled by the fact that my defensives, all I get are offensive like chess pieces and legs, and I haven't had enough defensive skills. But once I get that, I can start pushing higher and higher. Plus, I'm only level 80, so I'm not really rolling to push higher and higher until I start getting high, the better rolls. And they just released the fact that at level 85 is when the actual like really good uniques have a chance to drop. So, you know, waiting for that. So I'm happy with just pushing in the upper or in the lower thirties to just get experience. And I, I'm hoping they roll out the nightmare dungeon experience buff because it'll make the much more worthwhile to roll but anyway i appreciate you watching this uh as i said in the other one you know builds are subjective i know this isn't like a bone spear build that does you know millions of damage or anything like that but it does a lot of consistent damage it does it well and it's the build that i've actually really enjoyed and i'm having success with and it may be one that you want and i just wanted to share it with people so i hope you enjoyed this and i will catch you later Bye.